the general election on November 3rd. I could not be more excited to be coming at you tonight with all of the amazing volunteer opportunities that we have for you to get engaged to help get Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and a whole suite of awesome Democrats over the finish line. I'm Jill Cayazzo. For those who don't know me, I am the crazed lunatic who is leading the Arlington Democrats in these final in this final sprint to the finish line. Um, and I'm just looking so forward to, uh, to calling it a victory on November 3rd, but I know we will not get there unless we all unite behind our candidates and get it done. So the whole goal of tonight is to get you plugged into the very many volunteer opportunities that, that we have. Um, I do want to start, though, with a little bit of a, a special feature, uh, an acknowledgement of Hispanic History Heritage Month. And I want to just turn things over briefly to our uh, Latino Caucus uh, co-lead, Christopher Concepcion, who is going to give us a little video that was created by the Latino Caucus in celebration of, his, of, Her of Hispanic Heritage Month. So, thank Christopher? You so, yes, thank you so much, Jill. And good evening, Arlington Democrats. For those that don't know me, I'm Christopher Concepcion, and I have the pleasure of serving as chair of the Arlington Democrats Latino Caucus. The Latinx community has always fought for its seat at the table. We have a long and beautiful history, not just in Arlington, but in our great nation. As we reach the end of Hispanic Heritage Month, the Latinx community of Arlington would like to share a special message for you all. This video you're about to see is not the work of outreach or the Latino Caucus, but the work of our community. It is the work we have done day in and day out in the face of diversity and discrimination. It is the work we have done thanks to our ambition and determination. It is the work we have done thanks to those who came first and swung the door open for the next generation of Latinx leaders. We encourage you to celebrate with our comunidad this Hispanic Heritage Month and enjoy the show. Thanks, Christopher. I hope this works. Here we go. The United States is a nation that has historically drawn its strength from the diversity of all who live here. From September 15th to October 15th each year, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Invite you to celebrate with us. Los invitamos a todos a celebrar con nosotros. Whether our ancestors have been here for generations. O si somos recientes inmigrantes. We represent a variety of countries and cultures. And we all contribute to the definition of what it means to be American. We may refer to ourselves in a variety of ways. Mexican-American, Chicano, Hispanic, Latino. Central American, Afro-Latinos, Dominicans. Latinx or Latine. Latina, Boricua, or Sudamericana. We are all included. Todos estamos incluidos. We embody the values and attributes that help build our nation. And generation after generation of our forefathers. And our foremothers, our ancestors. Have represented the best of America. We believe in the future of America. That with hard work and a good education, our children will have more opportunities than we had. That our best days are not behind us, but ahead of us. Lo mejor está por venir. We are not the problem. We are creative and will work to find solutions. Creemos firmemente en el sueño americano y por esa razón estamos aquí. Even before the inception of this country, we have shaped the American dream and continue to do so. But we're not naive. We know that there are those who may not want us, think we don't belong, and even say we are less than human. But we also recognize they do not speak for America, because the idea of America has always been bigger than this. And we know what we are capable of achieving together. We are builders, somos constructores. Both literally and figuratively. Of structures like homes and bridges, of families and communities. De esperanzas y posibilidades. We are artists, poets, writers, and musicians. Somos artistas, poetas, escritores, y músicos. We tell the story of what it means to be human. We have served this country in uniform proudly and in high numbers. In battles from the American Revolutionary War, 
to Iraq and Afghanistan. Defining and defending our hard-won freedoms. We are your friends and neighbors. Somos sus amigos y vecinos. We serve you as elected leaders. Servimos como líderes electos. We serve you as county commissioners and volunteers. Les servimos como comisionados del condado y voluntarios. We are PTA parents. We are advocates for all children. Somos padres del PTA y, lo, y abogamos por todos los niños. We are business owners and entrepreneurs. We are scientists and engineers. We innovate, we explore, we advocate, and we educate. Innovamos, exploramos, abogamos y educamos. We bring experiences that deepen the understanding of what it means to be American. The future is dependent on the talent, hard work, ingenuity, resilience, and activism of our community to help us all realize the Amer America's promise. So let's celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Si sí se puede! Sí se puede. Sí se puede. Thank you, Latino Caucus, for sharing a little bit of your, of your enthusiasm and the reasons why you are engaged so heavily in this election. We are going to be hearing a little bit more about what the Latino Caucus is up to um, a little bit later in our meeting uh, as we hear about all the great things that outreach has going on. I am going to try to get us out of this and back to the meeting slides. There we go. All right. Thanks again. Um, and welcome, let me officially welcome you to the Resisting While Social Distancing meeting. It's our, I can't remember which number meeting we were having remotely, but we've been meeting remotely since April. And I think we're doing a great job of keeping up the resistance and keeping up the fight, even though we are not meeting in person. Um, as those of you who have been at these meetings before, and I know we have at least one new person, so really welcome. Um, but for those of you who have been around the block before, you know we like to start with action. And I think that uh, the Notorious RBG would, would absolutely approve of that approach. So I'm, I'm, I'm invoking her image here on the, on the slide to just remind everybody, 27 days, 27 days until the most important election of our lives. Do it for, for our kids, do it for yourself, do it for Ruth, um, and tell them that Ruth sent you. So please, if, that, if nothing else helps to focus your attention, hopefully her memory will be that revolution that gets us over the finish line in 27 days. So we're going to head out really fast and do an action, which is our social media challenge for tonight. Um, please take out your phone or head over to a, a new browser window and uh, go to the Facebook page of the Arlington Democrats, which is um, forward slash Arlington Dems. And there you will see pinned to the top of the, uh, the Facebook page, the, a post that looks an awful lot like this. Um, there was some chat on the beginning of the meeting about uh, sending out positive messages about early voting. Couldn't agree more. We definitely want to encourage everybody to early vote to the extent that they feel safe to do so. If you feel like you can go out and grocery shop uh, in a safe manner, then I assure you, you can, you can do the same with early voting. Uh, the county does a great job of, uh, of using appropriate safety measures. Um, and uh, so we really are encouraging everybody to early vote to the extent possible so that we can cut down on lines on election day, so that we can just have a, you know, just a terrific experience all along and bank as many votes as we can prior to election day um, so that we can really show a very, very strong uh, return uh, on that night. So please, as now that I've hopefully spread that out long enough, you've gone to our page, you've found this post, please hit share or like into your network. It's always helpful to include your own positive short message at the top. And, and let your friends and, and, and family and all your Facebook friends know about this positive message. Not everybody knows about early voting. A lot of people do. We're really excited about the numbers of early voters that we're seeing, but still, not everybody knows. So you can help to spread that positive word just by sharing or liking this Facebook post into your network. We, we tried to keep the, you know, the 
We tried to keep the rhetoric down a bit in this message, so hopefully you'll find it something that's appropriate really for just about any social media network. So if you could do that, it would be extremely helpful. We are pointing people in this post to rldemsvote.org. That is the main voting page on the Arlington Democrats website. It is a one-stop shop if you need information about voting in Arlington this year. Um, how to early vote, how to vote absentee by mail, how to vote on election day, voter registration. It's, it's just a quick hit list of information that you'd need. So I appreciate everybody doing that. Um, hopefully you've had enough time. In the interest of time, we're gonna keep moving on in our agenda to voting items. We do have a couple of pieces of business that we wanna take care of here before we get to our additional um, volunteer activities. First up is we're always delighted when we're able to welcome new people into the leadership of the Arlington Democrats, which we're fortunate to be able to do almost every month. This month, we're excited to be welcoming three um, precinct ops, uh, vice chair, area chairs to, to the mix, as well as a new uh, membership co-chair for our Blue Community Corps. Uh, Blue Community Corps is our voter, uh, I'm sorry, it's our community service arm. So we make sure that we're living our values every day through our Blue Community Corps. Um, we've had that position open for a while. Christopher Concepcion, who you just saw, from our Latino caucus is actually gonna be moving over to, to help with this role. And there's probably gonna be some synergy with the Latino caucus, so that's excellent. And we're also excited to have Mark Habib, Amy Rollins and Mark Thiel um, entering a precinct operations leadership positions and as noted. I am looking for a motion to elect slash appoint these folks to uh, the steering committee and the precinct ops, uh, precinct captain ranks. So moved. Second. Second. All right, that is a properly seconded motion. So if you are in favor of that motion, please go to the participant tab in Zoom and you will see at the bottom there a little yellow green uh, yes uh, button that you should click in, in order to indicate whether you support this motion and we will see if the motion passes by the number of yeses. And as always, Maggie and, and Lisa are, are behind the scenes working the Zoom, so, so help me out here. That passes. Correct. That, Thanks very much. I, I'm not seeing it. I'm sorry. I'm seeing reactions, but I'm not seeing a little yellow button. Green. It's green. It's the green yes in the participant box. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm sure it passed. I just want to make sure in case we have another thing to vote on. Sorry. Okay. Thank you're you. good. That's all right. We want to make sure everybody is able to vote. We do actually have one other thing to vote on. Um, this is a resolution in support of enhancing broadband connectivity here in Arlington. Um, this is a topic of a a uh, virtual forum that was hosted by our Black Caucus. Um, I think it was last month. Um, and you'll be hearing more about the Black Caucus later in our, in our meeting. Um, but the resolution first voices support for the measures that APS has taken to bridge the digital divide and support of APS students as all of the students have gone online for the start of the school year. Having access to the internet is critically important. Um, we're at 97% connectivity for, for APS students, which is great, but, but still not enough. Um, and so in addition to voicing support for the measures taken, the resolution also calls on elected officials at all levels of government, local, state, et cetera, to, to do what they can to really promote the public provision of high-speed broadband so that we can get to that 100% and we can help folks to, to bridge that digital divide. Measures could include uh, municipal broadband authority among many other measures um, and action could be taken at the local level, state level, et cetera. Steering did recommend approval of this resolution, which was shared with the voting members of the party in advance of this meeting. Um, I am looking for a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion about this? Hearing none, I'm gonna ask again to go to the participant tab, find the little yellow, green, yes button, click it, and we will see if this motion passes by counting up the yeses. That passes. Terrific. Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. It's an important resolution. We definitely want to make sure we, we address connectivity issues in this very, very challenging era that we find ourselves in. Next up is our joint campaign. Our joint campaign is the group of folks who are really focused on that sprint um, to get us to the finish line from summer until November, really focusing on the particular election cycle at hand and working with our local campaigns as well as our statewide campaigns. Um, I think we are gonna be hearing tonight from one of our joint campaign co-chairs, Alex Zinn. So Alex, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Jill. Um, all right, so first up on our updates, I wanted to let everyone know that tomorrow is our final gold card event. Uh, so we have hosted three great virtual gold card events so far. Thank you all for coming and participating. 
Um, it's a different year, but we, we've had such a great time trying to put these on in a safe way. We have one more. Uh, so tomorrow is our centennial celebration. This is taking, um, we would usually have a gala at this point, I think, uh, but we're doing this instead. And we have some great speakers. You can see them here up on the screen. Um, if you have a gold card, you are already set to go. And we would love to see you tomorrow. If you don't have a gold card or an individual ticket, they are available uh, through the Arlington Democrat website so that you can uh, get access to this uh, special event that we're hosting tomorrow. As you can tell, great, great um, folks lined up, Cory Booker, Sylvia Garcia, and then some of our, our folks from here in Virginia, Don Byer, Terry McAuliffe, Jennifer McClellan, Don Caromes, and Hala Ayala. Um, so um, looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow for our last Gold Card event. Alexandra, what, uh, Alex, what time is that? Uh, 7 p.m. Oh, 7 p.m. I see it. Yep. Uh, thank you. All right, moving right along. Yard signs. I'd like to thank anybody on the call who came out this weekend to place yard signs on the medians throughout Arlington. We got it all done mostly on Saturday, which is great. And it was um, a beautiful weekend to put yard signs out. Uh, a lot of you might have heard, but some of them were um, uh, messed with this weekend. A little bit of damage and vandalism, unfortunately. Um, to some of our signs um, and we have gone out and replaced them and we're continuing to go out and replace them. If you see any, let us know. Uh, but we, you know, it's, we are, it's very unfortunate that that's happened after all of our volunteers did that, but we're keeping them up. We're trying to make sure that all of our candidates have that presence across the county. Um, and there are some other opportunities to get involved with our yard sign dashes on November 2nd. So the night before the election, we will be doing a polling location sign dash, meaning we'll go put them out at the polling locations. Um, that event is already up. And then after the election, we're looking for folks who will help us go clean them up so that we can recycle all of those signs. And so if you're interested, um, the events are on Mobilize. And so you can sign up there. Um, you can also request your own yard sign for your lawn at arlingtondemocrats.org slash yard sign while supplies last. I believe we still have some Biden-Harris, a little bit of Warner, plenty of those joint campaign signs, which you see in that picture there. Um, so uh, I think that's it on the yard signs. Please get one today. All right, and then the last um, update from the joint campaign, we do have volunteer opportunities um, for you to be able to go out and uh, do something in the community, try and reach voters. This is an odd year where we're not, we don't have the kind of canvassing that we normally do. Um, and so if you would still like to get out there in the nice weather and, and do something, we, this is the opportunity for you. You can stay safe and get the message out by doing lit drops. So literature, we have a lot of different literature that we're going to be um, papering Arlington with um, over the next few weekends, dropping at people's doors. Um, so we've, we are creating all the routes. We'll give you all the materials and all you have to do is go drop it off. Um, and we have opportunities uh, both weekend days, every weekend until the election. So you can do something every weekend if you wanna get outside safely um, and help us reach voters. Um, because that, you know, not being able to go out and talk to them, it might make you feel a little nervy about this year and this might help you calm those nerves by going out and do something, doing something. So um, also that event is on Mobilize. So go right ahead and sign up um, and, and we'll get you out there um, any weekend coming up. So also I'll just make a quick plug on the Mobilize. Um, Go ahead and bookmark that that site and if you're ever interested in any events coming up we have poll greeting i know they'll cover that we also cross post all of the local coordinated campaign activities onto our mobilize page so it's a one-stop shop where you can find out what biden phone bank is going on or what what town hall or, or group watch they're doing as well so plug for our mobilize page um and that's your kind of go to area to figure out what's going on if, you, if you're interested in volunteering in the next, you know, less than a month. Thanks, Alex. And I just want to also mention that, you know, if you are, if you have um, 
you know, a job that enables you to, to do things during the week or you're retired, et cetera. If you want to grab the lid on the weekend and, and do the, the drops during the week on your schedule, that's totally fine. We're asking you to pick it up on the weekend so we can have the, the depot ready to go for you, but you do have that flexibility. So this really is a great opportunity. Um, if you have that you know, extra hour or two that you can fit this in just to go put a sticky on doors or, or slide a door hanger onto an, a, a, door hang, a doorknob, it really could be very helpful. Um, so please check out that mobilize link. There are lots of opportunities there in addition to what Alex has already described and we're going to be hearing about a few more as we as we keep going. There are a couple of additional events that I threw into the joint campaign section that I'm just going to go over really quick. Um, in the interest of time, I put them here instead of at the end of the meeting. Um, first, there is a, vice, a VP debate happening tonight, which is in part why I'm talking so fast. Um, and that is, uh, that's starting at 9 o'clock, and I'm determined that we are going to get out by then. Um, and in fact, uh, the, the Arlington Young Democrats are hosting a, hosting a watch party, so you could go right from this Zoom to that Zoom um, and check it out. Um, and that would be fantastic. The link is there. It's also on the Arlington Young Democrats Facebook page. We do post this uh, presentation uh, after, the, after the meeting is over, so you'll be able to get all of these links live. Um, but in order to get to this link in a timely fashion, you would need to go, I think, to the Arlington Young Democrats Facebook page. In addition, we have our watch party coming up on election day, November 3rd. This too will be virtual, so that'll be a first for us. Um, again, it'll be a virtual Zoom watch party, which is exactly what we did for the special election in July, which I thought was a lot of fun. Um, so we'll stream some results doing a screen share like this, and we'll just um, we'll, we'll, we'll sit there with each other and see what happens. Um, but register for that event, look forward to seeing you there. And then we traditionally have a, a post-election, you know, day after election day, unity lunch. We're going to do it again, um, but we're going to do it virtually um, instead of uh, meeting in person, unfortunately, this year. But what we're really going to emphasize is ordering from um, local small businesses into your home and then joining us on Zoom where we can all watch each other chew food um, and talk about all the, all the great heroic volunteerism this past year in a very, very strange year. So again, the sign up link is there at the bottom. Um, this is also on our Facebook page or on our event calendar, arlingtondemocrats.org forward slash calendar for those who don't like Facebook. Um, either one will get you to the sign up page. Okay, moving right along to voter support. This is the group that helps voters make sure that they have everything that they need to succeed at the polls. And I'm gonna turn things over, I believe, to our voter support chair, Marsha Johnston. Okay, let's unmute. All right. Yeah. Um, yes, loving this weather, it's great. We've got some great volunteering. My first thing is muchísimas gracias to uh, my translation services chair, vice chair, uh, Sandra Brody, to tech team members, Elizabeth Onder, Jesse Aronson, and Lisa Becker, tech team lead, who finally have, we have now an Arlington Dems website that is entirely available in Spanish. If you uh, ever felt envious that the Fairfax Dems had their little flag thing up at the top and they could translate the whole site, well, we have the same thing now. So we do that, and I also wanna thank Rosita Briseño and Karen Ruckhaus, who are working on fixing bad automatic translations because we are using some automatic translation, but we have humans in there uh, fixing it if it's, if it's weird. And I will tell you that apparently uh, Karen is translating for Voice of America for Kamala Harris tonight. So these are very, very good translators. Next slide, please. So quick uh, going back to my theme of uh, finding every voter. This year, uh, this is uh, the next few slides. I'll just show you how you can help us turn out 90% of uh, voters and hit Jill's target uh, of a tidal wave in Virginia. Next slide, please. So voter registration, as you should all know, maybe it ends on October 13th. That's next Tuesday. So if anybody wants to vote Donald Trump out of office must be registered by 5 p.m. on Tuesday. So we've got some stuff going on the weekend. We, uh, again, with COVID, we are not taking tons of volunteers, but we have a few slots. Saturday, 10 to 12, Sherlington Library could use one person. Y necesitamos hispanohablantes aquí. We need some Spanish speakers in these places on Saturday, 9 to 11, Columbia Pike. We can take two. This is Columbia Pike Plaza, the CVS. There's a Mega Mart there as well. And also at from 11 to 1 at the same plaza, we can do that. You can do your shopping there. It's a nice little market. Great produce. Mar Marsh, yeah. if I could add, 
Yeah. Uh, the uh, there will be a voter registration from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Crystal Plaza Apartments on between 20th and 23rd Street on on Richmond Highway. Okay, that's wonderful. It'll be outside, and my wife speaks fluent Spanish. Okay, that's good too. If you do, you need volunteers, Mark? No, they've oh. got it. It's actually via the the League of Women Voters. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. So I have a bit.ly link there. Sometimes those are a little hard to, I don't know, <laughs> note down. But as Jill said, they'll be in the in the slides, so you can sign up there if you if you can help us out. Um, we'll also be at uh, Ethiopian restaurant on Saturday morning. But I have Amaric speakers joining me, so it's great. Next slide, please. Um, so the COVID canvas, I like to call it, our sticky canvassing, where you're not knocking on people's doors, um, is going on still with the Latino caucus um, is, has taken the lead on this. And uh, so they will be doing these packets until October 13th. So just contact on email Sandra, Brody or Detta, Kissel, um, those emails there, which you can access later and pick up a packet, do it on your own time. And, and to be clear, you don't have to be a member of the Latino caucus or yeah. speak Spanish. Thanks, so they're just organizing it, but we'll, they will take any, any person. Any walker. Any, and, and again, you don't need to speak Spanish either. This is a not registered. It's a registration sticker and just vote early sticker. In we're down to just the last few packets on this, and we're really coming up on the deadline. So if folks could, could dig deep and help with this effort, that'd be great. Right. Okay. So next slide, please. Okay, early voting expands, not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, we get the four um, additional sites from, to Clarendon, uh, Walter Reed, Aurora Hills, Madison, and Langston Brown Community Centers. And I wanna give a big shout out, thank you to the folks, our uh, terrific uh, folks who have agreed to help manage these sites with my team that's uh, been managing at Courthouse. Um, uh, Natalie Hall and Jack Kincaid, and I hope I don't forget anybody, Detta Kissel and Sarah McKinley and Laurel and um, David Tate and Jean Christensen. Anyway, if I miss anybody, I apologize, but thank you so much for stepping up to manage these sites. Next slide, please. Um, so we have more slots for poll greeting, early voting poll greeting, which is pretty much similar to what you do on election day not as many hours in the day, it's afternoons at the new sites, two to seven. And then all three Saturdays, starting 17th, 24th, 31st, there will be early voting on Saturday um, at courthouse as well. So and that's from like nine to five. So those slots are available too. So just go to, again, this link will be in the slide and um, you can find it on our website too. But uh, Please sign up. They're filling up, I will tell you. So please sign up and uh, join us. Next slide. I just wanted to note some uh, other voter support we have, just in case people are not aware of them. We have a Spanish helpline. Um, so anyone who needs assistance for voting information in Spanish, 703-528-8588, which is our general number and extension four. And we are giving people information in Spanish. Also, we finally have the voter information guide um, and fact document, thanks to a bunch of uh, great volunteers who helped put that together. Those are updated and on the website as well. So lots of, lots of information in there. And also we have early voting flyers that have site locations, dates, hours in English, Spanish, and Amharic. If anyone wants that PDF, PDF of those to print out yourself, to take to you know, your building, to your family, anywhere, let me know and um, I'm happy to send it along. That's it. Marsha, this is Sankita. I have a question really quick. I'm looking at the flyers right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna print them up and put them up in the Whitmore. Okay. So I just wanna uh, clarify, cause I'm gonna put this, the English and the Spanish on one document cause you, okay. sent, me the, you sent me the word file. Yeah. So I just wanna make sure this is correct. So, uh, so starting October 19th is when the satellite locations um, open. But before that, from September 18th to October 31st is at the, um, in Clarendon, correct? With the additional Saturdays. Okay. October, October 17th. Yeah, it's 17th, which is the Saturday. That's the first one. The 18th right. is, 
Okay, but the 19th through the 30th, 8 a.m. to 7, right. 7 p.m. are the satellite locations. That's right, 2 to 7 on the Mondays through Fridays. For and those. all of this information is on Arl is Arl vote, uh, arldemvotes.org? Yep. It's all on the website. voting page. Yep. Yeah, I'm just trying to make it into one document with the Spanish and English. Yeah, okay, thank you. Right there, it's in you. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. All right, great. Well, thank you so much to the voter support team. And I really do want to give a big shout out to our early voting uh, team captains, Paula, Kevin, Matt. Uh, I know you, Marsha and Mary have been out at the early voting site in Courthouse Plaza just for hours or working behind the scenes to schedule volunteers. Greatly appreciated. Folks, they need your help. Um, they can't work all of those hours alone. Please, please, please sign up to be an early voting poll greeter. We want to make sure that all of our Democratic voters are greeted with a smile and a blue sample ballot when they get to the, the polls and only you can make it happen. So please sign up. And all of the uh, vo volunteer opportunities that Marcia mentioned are available on our mobilize link as well. So if you've got that page up, you should be able to, to click on it and get signed up right away. So thank you guys, moving right along to precinct operations. I believe I'm gonna turn things over to our chair of precinct operations, Carol Fontaine. Precinct Ops is uh, the group of folks who make sure that all of our different geographic areas within Arlington know exactly who our, who our candidates are and who they're gonna support at the polls. Carol? Thank you, Jill, and good evening, Arlington Democrats. As always, it's good to be with you all. Um, I wanna thank the newcomers and um, everyone for joining what I like to call the battle to preserve our democracy. Um, um, and also a special and huge thank you to our area chairs and our precinct captains and to the many, many volunteers um, who helped deliver over 45,000 messengers. This was an awesome job. They did it in record time. It was amazing teamwork. Thank you all. I'm still kind of blown away by how fast it, it all went. Um, slide, please. Um, we don't have any new precinct captains to ask you to elect this month, but we do have um, precinct captain vacancies in several of our 54 precincts. Um, and the ones listed here are the ones where we especially need help. Um, you don't have to live in the precinct to be a precinct captain. Um, slide. Um, so, just a quick bit about what precinct captains do. I say this every year, every month, and I'm going to say it again. Arlington's job is to be the difference in keeping Virginia blue. We have to get out every single last Democratic vote in Arlington to offset the other parts of the state. And much of the work that makes that happen happens at the precinct level. Um, precinct captains are key to reaching our voters where they live and encouraging them not only to vote for our candidates, but also to volunteer and they do a whole lot more. Um, if you're interested in learning more, please contact me at precinctoperations at arlingtondemocrats.org. Uh, slide. Um, just a quick word about our multi-unit buildings. Arlington has more than 1,500 multi-unit buildings, which we affectionately call MUBs. Um, most of these are locked and inaccessible to us. But uh, thank goodness, uh, in a lot of them, we have building ambassadors who can help give us um, inside help. They are a critical source for providing voting-related information for uh, the residents in their buildings. Um, they were a big help uh, these last couple of weeks delivering uh, the messenger to their mail rooms. In some cases, they were able to put it actually on the front mats, always following building protocols. Um, if you live in a, a multi-unit building and would like to help us, uh, please email us at mobs at arlingtondemocrats.org. Slide. Sliding right along. Um, our biggest focus, our biggest need, and our biggest impact for Arlington is poll greeting. Um, as you all know, Arlington Democrats are encouraging early in-person voting um, but we expect there will still be a bunch of voters who are going to choose to vote at their regular polling places on November 3rd. And we want to make sure that they see or take a sample Democratic ballot. Um, as you all probably know, local candidates are not identified by party on the official ballot. So it's really important that we make sure that they can see who our local candidates are. Um, and we do all of this with safety first. I want to give a shout out to Jill, who's been clear and insistent from the start that we adhere 
to all safety measures, masks, hand sanitizers. We're gonna have tables and chairs with stacks of sample ballots. We're gonna have sandwich boards. Um, and uh, just to let you all know, we need 700 volunteers to provide all day coverage. My understanding and Maggie or Jill can clarify this, is that we're gonna have a breakout room at the end of this meeting. And um, Marsha and I are gonna talk about poll, poll reading. Is that? Is That's that right. Still? That's the plan. Yeah. We'll see if we can master the technology. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, speaking of Marsha and poll reading, Marsha and I talked today about um, having uh, poll readers who speak Spanish. I have reached out to Sandra Brody and uh, the Latino Caucus and ask them if they could help us uh, recruit Spanish speaking poll readers. And that would be terrific for the satellite locations. And Marcia can use them until uh, Saturday, the whatever that is, October 31st. And then um, we would like to um, have them at our um, precincts. I think there are about 18 of them that we think have pretty heavy um, Spanish speaking voters, um, have them come over and help us. And um, so we're, we're, you know, we're gonna con continue to work on that. So um, how can you help? Slide, please. Um, so, oh, see this mask? This mask was made by Sarah McKinley. And I talked to her this afternoon about possibly making masks that say, is it yo habla espanol? Did I, did I say that right? I, I speak Spanish. Um, that would let our voters know that they can come to them uh, for a Spanish language ballot. Um, more on that sometime. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so what we really need is for people to sign up to be a poll reader on November 3rd. And this is the bit.ly link. It's 2020 poll reading. And um, let me just close with a quick word about the Virginia State Seal, Sic Semper Tyrannis. So I had Virginia history in the fourth grade, in the seventh grade, and in the 11th grade. So I know that Sic Semper Tyrannis literally translates to thus ever to tyrants. But I also know that what it really means is Virginia knows how to respond to tyrants. I'm done. Okay, thanks, Carol, for that. We appreciate it. I do really appreciate all of the hard work that went into delivering the messengers. I witnessed one of the area chairs doing the bundling outdoors, which I think is something we've never done before in order to maintain social distancing. But I know it was a huge effort um, to get those uh, messengers that this joint campaign designed, and they're beautiful out. So thank you, everybody who participated in that. I hope everybody who took a messenger route will take another lit drop route that, that Alex was mentioning and get us over the finish line. Um, so, but in addition, I hope everybody who took a messenger route and then some signs up to poll greet, 700 volunteers is not an exaggeration. That is typically what we need to cover all 54 precincts in Arlington on election day. It is an all hands on deck situation. Please, please, please sign up to be a poll greeter. Even one hour of your time could be really helpful. All right, moving right along to Beyond Arlington, which is our program that makes sure that we're helping out beyond our borders as much as possible with to candidates who can really make a difference in flipping uh, the Senate and, the, and, and hopefully maintaining the House. So I'm gonna turn things over to our great Beyond Arlington leader, Steve Baker. Jill, thank you so much. And uh, with less than a month ago, we were continu continuing to do our uh, twice week phone banks every Tuesday and Thursday. If you uh, are not on our email list, you can go to the Arlington Dems website and uh, sign up to receive our email. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night, we will be phone banking for the human rights camp with the human rights campaign, I think for Dr. Cameron Webb. Um, next week with Dan Helmer, October 20th with Don Beyer. So we've got the, just a, a star studded uh, cast of dignitaries coming to speak to us about the importance of voting. Uh, we'll finish it up with uh, Alfonso Lopez on November Sunday, November 1st. That'll be all, our only non-Tuesday, Thursday phone bank. And uh, folks, if you can, join us. If you know others that want a phone bank, they will never do more important work than, than help these amazing candidates. We have to send uh, Abigail Spanberger and Elaine Luria 
back to Congress, defend their seats, and we've got a great opportunity to uh, flip in the fifth district with Dr. Cameron Webb. Great opportunity in the first as well with Qasem Rashid. Um, so please, please sign up for a phone bank. Next slide. The only other thing we're doing is uh, lit drop. Just as, as we're doing in Arlington, uh, if, if Arlington's way too close to home for you, you can hop in your car and drive two hours, fight the traffic down 95 and, and do some lit drop in Henrico and Chesterfield County. It's a really important special project for Congresswoman Spanberger, uh, where we are providing information on early voting we cannot promise you a uh, carpooling as we did uh, two years ago. So you need to have your own car. You need to be able to get yourself there. Um, if, if you have a roommate or a family member that wants to go with you, I guess you can manage that too. But uh, to the extent we can, uh, we'd love to get more folks down there to do some of this important lit drop. So that's what we are doing uh, between now and election day and hope Hope to see you guys uh, on the phone banks. Dave, real quick, uh, yes. the lit drop for Abigail Spamberger, is there any specific date? We're going, uh, so no, if you have time during the week, um, sign up through my email and I will send you the campaign headquarters. It's on uh, Parham Road in, in Rico County. So it's very easy to get to right off Route 64. They, uh, pass you the lit uh, from a tent outside so you can basically drive drive through and get your lit, hit your doors and head back home. It is a great way to spend part of your day. And we're, we're doing it on any day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you bet. Thanks, Steve, and thanks to you and Rose for all of your hard work with Beyond Arlington. Really appreciate it. We definitely want to make sure that we are impactful in those seats. So thank you, and thank you to all of the volunteers who are helping with those races. Happy to do it, and, and again, spe special shout out to Rose for uh, doing such great work and recruiting folks uh, for the Moms Demand Action phone banks that we've been doing. So awesome. Props so. to Rose. Got to, got to get in on some of that. So definitely, you know, time, the, now is the time to get over your fears of phone banking. It is, it's, it's actually pretty fun. Uh, people are home and answering the phone. So uh, check it out with Stephen Rose. Moving right along to outreach. So outreach is our group that makes sure that we're, we're present in the moment um, and that we're giving a little bit of TLC to groups that may be underrepresented historically in our, uh, in our politics and governance. And so I'm going to turn things over to our great outreach chair, Mike Heminger. Awesome. Thanks, Jill. And good evening, Arlington Democrats. Uh, my name is Big Mike. I'm the chair of the Outreach Committee. Um, so uh, just as Jill said, Outreach exists to uh, build a bigger tent and to reach our underrepresented communities uh, within the De uh, Democratic Party. Um, we're doing this by, uh, you know, various F uh, outreach efforts throughout the uh, entire county. Um, there are uh, hundreds of different people behind the scenes working on these projects. So uh, tonight's update is really a reflection of those people uh, and the incredible leaders on outreach. I'm going to be re uh, reading a prepared statement so that I don't miss anything. Um, before we jump right into it, I wanted to talk a little about uh, some of the upcoming forums. Uh, as part of the outreach efforts, we frequently host issue-based and educational uh, forums. On October 14th, we'll be hosting a forum on uh, housing and the COVID crisis. Um, some of our speakers include reps from the governor's office. Uh, Delegate Lopez will be on there. Uh, we're hoping to get a uh, member of the county board. Um, the housing commission chair will be there and a few of the locally affected residents. So you don't want to miss it. Save the date. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, moving on from the forums, we do have efforts underway at uh, a few of our farmers markets across the county. Uh, please come see us uh, on Saturdays at Courthouse on Sundays at Columbia Pike and in Farlington. Uh, as always, and as several of the other speakers have already mentioned, uh, we are taking extra precautions uh, for our volunteers. Uh, please stop by, say hello. You can also grab a yard sign uh, or a button. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as we get into the caucuses, I just wanted to briefly let you know uh, to stay tuned. We are in the beginning phases of standing up an Ethiopian caucus. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, so Blue Families is an initiative aimed at making uh, resistance family friendly and social and helping our kids engage politically. Uh, as you know, Arlington is one of the smallest counties in our country. Uh, we are small but mighty. I'm pleased to announce that Blue Families, uh, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. 
uh, has hit 150,000 postcards. Uh, Josh Kaplowitz is the uh, amazing leader that has led this effort this season. Uh, he initially set out a goal of a stretch goal uh, of 100,000 postcards at the beginning of the election season. So uh, incredible work. We're at 150,000 postcards so far. Uh, there's still a number of postcards to write uh, for North Carolina and for Florida. We need those by October 14th, with this, uh, which is just one week away. Uh, let's get this done, Arlington. We've seen what we can do. We've seen uh, what's possible. So let's finish strong. Um, you can head over to the Arlington uh, Democrats Blue Family's Facebook page uh, to sign up. A couple of dates to say for you. Uh, October 11th, there's going to be a phone bank um, at 1 p.m., and on October 12th, uh, there will be uh, calls made for North Carolina um, and training provided uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. We can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. I'll do that, but I just want to give a shout out to Josh Kaplowitz for doing an amazing job on this project. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh, of course. Um, all right, moving on to business and uh, labor. Uh, business and labor consists of Arlington residents, union members, and workers interested in improving the lives of working people through political action, policy advocacy, advocacy uh, and support of campaigns. You can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we are pleased to announce that former Governor Terry McAuliffe uh, will join Arlington and Fairfax Democrats as a representative of the Biden and Harris campaign at a virtual event on October 21st at 7 p.m. Please save the date. Uh, the business outreach team is hosting the event to generate excitement for the Biden-Harris uh, team and Democrats along the ticket, as well as discuss what Biden's Build Back Better plan uh, for the economy means for local businesses and everyone's livelihoods. We are also working on having a second elected official participate, as well as local minority and immigrant business owners uh, to ask questions about how the Biden-Harris administration uh, will address their needs. Our request tonight is simply to watch the Arlington Democrats Facebook page or our website uh, for the formal announcement this month and then to sign up and make sure that we provide a large audience and lots of excitement. We can go to the next slide, please. Um, at the end of that slide, I'm sorry, uh, you don't have to go back, but we are working on a uh, uh, housing um, forum um, that's uh, being done in conjunction with the Labor Caucus as well as uh, Arlington uh, Young Democrats. All right, next slide, please. All right, AAPI stands for Asian American and Pacific Islander. The AAPI caucus exists to represent the local AAPI community and encourage both nonpartisan civic engagement and democratic goals uh, within the local and state AAPI community. Their next meeting is gonna be on October 18th at 2.30 p.m. Next slide, please. The focus, and uh, as you can see, there's a theme. Um, it's get out the vote. That's being done uh, via two uh, efforts right now. Um, that is, uh, excuse me, lost my place. So voter registration, uh, postcards are underway. Uh, we might uh, be able to organize a text banking effort. Stay tuned with that. Uh, next slide, please. Here's a pic of a couple of our uh, local AAPI uh, leaders over the weekend, uh, engaging voters directly and getting voters registered um, there was a pop-up event uh, here in South Arlington. Um, they're working on amplifying AAPI-related news on their Facebook page. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as part of that effort, uh, there was a virtual bus tour uh, for the national AAPI um, over the weekend. So please join us on Facebook. Uh, the Black Caucus is busy registering voters and working to lift up issues in the Black community. Uh, the next meeting is going to be on October 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, we invite you to join us. Next slide, please. Wanted to just take a quick moment to highlight another voter registration effort underway in the county. The Arlington Black Caucus is partnering with the Virginia Democratic Black Caucus to register voter. Um, you can find registration information at businesses all across the county. Next slide, please. All right, Disability Caucus. The mission of the Arlington Democrats Disability Caucus is to represent local, uh, the local disability community, increase awareness within Arlington Democrats on disability issues. On uh, July 26th, the, uh, I'm sorry, July 26th was the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, the Disabilities Caucus held a commemoration of the 30th anniversary of the ADA and the stakes for disability rights with noted disability rights champion and Clinton and Obama appointee, Judy Homan, uh, whose story was featured in the award-winning documentary, uh, Crip Camp. She also published her autobiography entitled Being Homan. Uh, next slide, please. 
the Disabilities Caucus meeting, uh, the next one will be held on October 21st at 7 p.m. Uh, and just a closing note from them is mobilize the disability vote. Next slide, please. Interfaith, interfaith exists to foster dialogue and engagement with Arlington and other faith communities in the DMV to ensure they are recognized, valued, and supported. Uh, their next meeting is scheduled for October 11th at 1 p.m. Next slide, please. I'm gonna read this one directly. Continuing to mobilize the DMV interfaith orgs uh, for letter postcard writing, uh, phone banks, voter registration activities going on in Virginia, Arizona, North Carolina, and Texas. Uh, they're connecting with a Biden interfaith team to coordinate efforts and increase visibility through local in-person voting events. Uh, there is, uh, I'm sorry, there was a issue forum last night on voter suppression. If you missed it, we'd invite you to catch a recap of it. Uh, they're in the beginning phases of organizing meet and greets with all of our, or not all, but some of our ballot candidates. Uh, so stay tuned with that. That will be pretty exciting. Uh, if you'd like to join interfaith, they're currently looking for volunteers on the planning and the engagement team. Next slide, please. All right, Latino Caucus has been busy, busy, busy. Um, next slide, please. You can make calls any day from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. now through the election. So if you have free time, uh, if you haven't noticed, there's something to do every single day. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so there, the non-contact voter canvas continues this weekend. Uh, we're gonna be putting sticky notes on doors. If you're free this weekend, please come join the Latino Caucus. Uh, as mentioned earlier, you do not need to speak Spanish for this. Next slide, please. There's been a big push uh, within outreach overall on census engagement from many of our caucuses. Uh, this work is wrapping up uh, and there's a final push for voter registration going on this weekend. Next slide, please. The Latino and Black Caucus hosted their first of three forums last night on the Juvenile Detention Center. Uh, quick shout out to Detta, Chris, Jonathan, Maya, Kathleen, and Sandra for all your hard work that's going on. The next forum will be mid-November. We invite you to join us and learn more about this important topic mid-November. Next slide, please. All right, MILVETS. Arlington MILVETS Caucus conducts outreach to the Arlington County uh, military and veteran community, their families, their friends, on behalf of the Arlington County Democratic Committee. Uh, their next meeting will be held on October 24th. Next slide, please. All right, as you can see, they have a food drive going on on October 10th at 10 a.m. this weekend. Um, they have done incredible work this year with food drives. We invite you to wear your Democratic gear. Uh, there is gonna be phone banking going on every Monday at 4.30 p.m. for outreach to veterans, military families, and friends. Um, so again, if you're looking for something to do, there's lots to do. Uh, next slide, please. All right, our newly formed uh, Women's Caucus, they're gonna have their next meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. Next slide, please. All right, awesome. I'm gonna take my outreach hat off and jump straight into the Arlington Young Democrats report. Take a uh, breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need some water after this. Uh, next slide, please. All right, another food drive. Thank you, Arlington. Every time there's an ask and a need, the need gets filled, um, and so we can't thank you enough. There was over 700 pounds of food um, that came in from APAC from right here in our community. So uh, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate that. Next slide, please. All right, we have made uh, more than 15,000 voter contacts so far. So if you are young or young at heart, uh, we encourage you to join us. You can find more information um, on our website, arlingtonyoungdems.org, or on Facebook. Next slide, please. All right, we have a phone bank for Pennsylvania going on on uh, Tuesday, October 13th, and the following Tuesday, the 20th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we invite you to join. It's the final countdown. So uh, no matter what you're interested in, there's gonna be something for you to do. Uh, next slide, please. We're doing a phone bank for Sarah Gideon on Tuesday, October 15th from seven to nine. If you wanna help us flip that seat, uh, please join us. Next slide, please. Phone bank for Cal Cunningham on Thursday, October uh, 22nd at 7 p.m. All these dates are on our Facebook as well. So if you uh, miss it while I'm speaking, uh, be sure to catch us up or catch up on Facebook. Next slide, please. All right, there is a text bank going on every Monday through the election from 6.30 to 8 p.m. So uh, in my opinion, this is one of the 
lowest hanging fruit activities that you can do. Super, super easy. If you've never done it before, uh, don't be intimidated. It's very, very, very simple. Next slide, please. All right, we have a trivia night going on uh, Wednesday, October 14th and on the 28th at 7 p.m. Uh, we invite you to join us. Um, next slide, please. All right, as mentioned at the beginning of the call, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, as uh, to honor that, Arlington Young Democrats will be uh, hosting a viewing party this weekend. Uh, we're gonna be watching Latin history for morons. Uh, if you're interested, please join us uh, October 11th at 7 p.m. Um, Christina Diaz Torres, who is our democratically endorsed candidate will also be uh, joining us. So uh, please join us. Next slide, please. All right, as Joe mentioned earlier, there is a Zoom at the end of this meeting. We're gonna be having a virtual watch party. So if you don't have plans, uh, grab the popcorn, please join us on another Zoom. It's gonna be exciting, you don't wanna miss it. Uh, I think that's the last slide before I wrap it up. I just wanted to mention that uh, Arlington Young Dems tonight is actually uh, doing um, efforts for Cameron, uh, Dr. Cameron Webb. So a lot of our members are doing that currently. I think that's it, Jill, um, back to you. Wow, that was a lot. Thank you so much, Mike. And I do want to reassure everyone that there is, first, there's not a quiz at the end of this meeting. You're not going to be expected to have memorized all of that. But what I hope that each of our presenters has done is, is whet your appetite, piqued your interest in one or two or five or 10 uh, volunteer opportunities. And then you go right to our website, arlingtondemocrats.org, um, to the volunteer page. You can find our, our signups there. If you want to go to the calendar, uh, forward slash calendar, you can see them by day. You can go to the mobilize.us forward slash Arlington Dems. You can find the volunteer opportunities there. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, at Arlington Dems, uh, and you can find the opportunities on our events page as well. Um, AYD has a Facebook page and, uh, and website as well, and they've got all their opportunities there as well. So if you hear something during this meeting, and you're like, oh, I got to check it out, go straight to your browser. You can find that info and you can get signed up. But I promise you, we are definitely going to get these slides up ASAP so you can refer back to them and find your volunteer opportunities of choice but really awesome job by the entire, entire outreach team. I did challenge the, the entire team this month that we would only have one speaker per, per section. Um, and as awesome as Mike is, and he's awesome, there is a lot, a lot of people standing behind outreach and all of that activity. And the same is true for voter support, precinct operations, beyond Arlington, et cetera. Really a great team and it's only missing you. So please, if you could get involved, we'd love to have you. All right, I think that brings us to a surprise second social media challenge. That's right, folks, because it is, one, it's like less than one month to election day and we need to be action oriented. So take out your phones again, go to your browser window, go to Facebook, look for this particular post, which was posted at 745 tonight. Um, I'm going to ask you to share or like a second post tonight, because not only do we want to encourage people to early vote, we need to encourage them to volunteer. We cannot get all of this work done by ourselves. It takes a huge, huge army in order to get us over the finish line. As Carol mentioned, we need 700 volunteers for uh, November 3rd election day poll greeting alone. And we probably need that number for early voting, lit drops, phone banking, et cetera. We just need a lot of folks. So if you could please share this, this post into your network let people know that it is time for them to step up. We need, we need our Democratic heroes. If you want to see Democrats win, now is the time to volunteer. And you can go right to our website, arlingtondemocrats.org forward slash election slash volunteering. Um, that is our one-stop shop for all of our major, major high need activities. And we would love to get more people involved. Um, that includes all the poll greeting, all the lit drops, et cetera. Uh, it's not every volunteer opportunity, but it's really the ones where you have high need. Um, so if you could please share this into your networks, I'd really appreciate it. We want to get as many people engaged as possible in our quest to restore sanity to our country and a Democrat into the White House, as well as to elect our entire terrific uh, ticket. Let me just take a moment to say, I mean, it, it, as much as I love Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, it's not all about them. We've got to reelect Senator Mark Warner. We've got to reelect our wonderful Congressman, okay, Don Meyer. We've got to reelect our terrific County Board Chair, Libby Garvey. We've got to elect Christina Diaz Torres and David Pretty to the school board. So we can't do it without you. Thank you so much for your help in, in the second uh, social media call to action. Um, so hopefully I've spread that out enough where you're able to do it. 
uh, I want to move us on to our next uh, section, and I believe it's the last section of our presentation, actually. We're killing it on time, folks. You've done a great job. I want to turn things over to the chair of our county board, Libby Garvey, who's going to be giving us our monthly county board update. Uh, for those of you who are new, what we do, we're very fortunate. Um, one month we'll have a county board update, the next month we'll have a, a school board update, and vice versa. And we're really fortunate to, to be hearing from our local leaders about what's happening in the county. So without further ado, Libby. Hey, thank you so much, Jill, and I'll be quick. I know I'm one of the few things standing between us and this debate coming up. Um, I'm going to go over basically three issues. We continued our work on racial equity um, at our meeting last, last month um, and talking a little bit more specifics about what we're doing. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the next slide has uh, a lot of words on it. Uh, I think you can, yeah, you can actually read them. So we're really taking a multi-pronged approach. We're looking at a series of conversations within the community that I'll talk about in a little bit more. Um, we've been doing for some time uh, education training on race and racism for employees through the GARE program, um, Government Alliance for Racial Equity. That's been going on since last year. Um, and that's part of this uh, cross departmental core, core team that's been set up as an outgrowth of that to continue the work. Um, and we are going to be doing a baseline assessment uh, to kind of get get the level sort of where we are as a community so in so people's attitudes and things and so we can see how we're doing. Um, and we're going to be establishing a network of allies <coughs> um, and identifying some more funding which um, we've got a nice grant coming from actually from Amazon to help out. Next one. Slide please. <clears throat> um, so we're also um, just a little bit for, this is for um, everybody here. Hopefully you'll be part of one of these um, lot dialogues on race and equity. Um, we're gonna be doing this sampling of attitudes and perspectives ahead of time. We've got a series of public conversations led by um, uh, <laughs> Courageous, uh, I'm blanking on the group. It's a, it's a local group that's been working for 20 years in this, in this area and challenging racism, CR, challenging racism. And they're gonna be working with us and working with the community. And that kickoff is going to start, I think maybe next week, really soon. Um, and we're gonna be doing um, a series of public conversations with kind of all the sort of a basic uh, foundation. So we all kind of understand and speak a little bit the same language and working to um, support community leaders and get some basic kind of training for people. So sort of a training the trainers so it can spread out. So I'm hoping that all Dems will, you know, will take on and do this and have a series of conversations among you. We're gonna have a tool book, a toolkit that's gonna uh, come out of this. And in the end, um, a final report and recommendations, which will, next slide, please. And then we will go on to, um, <clears throat> this is one of the other issues that we're working on, I think as you are well aware, there are a lot of people who are very concerned about our, that our logo, our logo, our seal and our flag represent a, basically a plantation house and want us to change it. Every member of the board has said that we are, uh, we do want to change it. Um, so we're going to work out how to do that. We have been asked not only to change that, we have had requests to change the names of many of our buildings, many of our streets, bridges, um, you name it, people are asking us to change names and symbols. And so we need to have um, a pol you know, sort of a process to do this. So we do it in an intentional way and we work it through with our community. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and uh, so the steps on doing this one with the logos are basically three some education, some exploration, exploration and an evaluation, and then we get into a process. Next slide, please. Um, so educational sessions, we've got a lot coming up. We're gonna be doing a primer on the history of logos and seals in Arlington. Turns out there's a huge binder. This has got a long history, um, and it's always good to know, you know where, how you got to where you are to sort of decide about where you wanna go and how to get there. Um, we're going to be putting out a, a, a reading list on the history of Arlington. Many of you are familiar with, I'm sure, a lot of the books that will be on there, written by people here in Arlington, such as um, My Hall's Hill by uh, Wilma Jones Kilgo. And uh, they're just, there's a lot out there. I have been learning interesting things myself. I think I kind of understand history and know about Arlington. I'm learning stuff all the time whenever you really get into this. Um, we will look at the U.S. Census. Um, our manager already gave a talk on that at our September on September 29, that's online if people want to look at it. It's pretty interesting. Um, on October 27, we've got David Brooks coming 
Um, and he's, we're going to look at Arlington Wees and hometown heroes who create the ties that bind. I mean, that's part of what we're all at work here doing, right? Building community, supporting community, and basically trying to live a values-driven life, which is what David Brooks has been kind of looking at uh, lately at this latter part of his life. So we're looking forward to having him come and meet with some of our own hometown heroes. Some of them you may know, but probably some of them you don't, because a lot of people doing really good work are not really loud about it. They don't get a lot of coverage but that's what keeps this community going. Um, also looking at some reverse genealogy research. Um, usually you look at yourself and then you go back and this is, let's go back there and find out what happened with the, with the descendants of that person moving forward. And there'll be some other things too. So this should be, I think, really interesting for folks and you can dip in and out as you wish. Next slide. <clears throat> and uh, so we're gonna be doing uh, obviously then this exploration and that's part of the, the, the dialogues I talked to on, on race, I've talked about on race and equity in Arlington, looking at the logos and seals, naming our facilities. We will have a kickoff in November on our historic preservation master plan. And this is just a bit of serendipity. That historic preservation master plan, this, this kickoff needs to be renewed. We've been working on that for probably well over a year, figuring out what we want need to do. And then all of a sudden everything has kind of converged. They'll be doing some surveys. One of the questions is, what does Arlington mean to you? Um, and if we're going to be looking at our seals and looking at our logos and our symbols, that's all about what the community means to you. So that kind of was already in train, which is great. So that will help kind of get, a, I think, a broader kind of look about and discussion in our community, hopefully pulling in everybody. All right, next slide. I think that's it on equity. Um, <clears throat> ah, yeah, one more. Um, so in December, we will get a summary of all the feedback we should be getting from these discussions um, going on and some initial um, insights from the survey done by the, on the Historic Preservation Master Plan. Um, and then the manager will be presenting us a proposal for next steps. That will include a process for changing symbols and names. There'll be a public engagement plan on that and then we will adopt those and that will be uh, how we will kick off 2021, which hopefully will be a whole lot better than 2020. Next um, slide, please. So I thought I'd do a little quick update on COVID. This is from our, uh, our webpage and the COVID dashboard, as you see in the top uh, right-hand corner is a great way to sort of see what's going on. Next slide. <clears throat> um, so you can see here, this is just, there's an update. This is from October 5th, because we had to make a slide update for today. Um, the new cases today were 15, so that's up a little bit. Hospitalization zero, deceased zero, which is great. In general, uh, next slide please. Arlington is doing pretty well, but this is where the whole equity thing comes in, right? Probably many of you have seen this or are aware of it, but if you will look at the percentage of our population that are Hispanic or Latino, it's about almost 16% of the population, but it's 40, almost 43% of our cases. So a lot of the disparities and inequities we have in healthcare and everything else plays out in spades in the pandemic. And we have that up on our webpage so you can see it. We're doing um, pop-up testing and local testing whenever we, we target the, uh, the neighborhoods where we have higher case rates to try to put the support there and, and get the information. What we're getting back is actually rates have continued to go down. We're doing touch wood. Unlike a lot of the rest of the country, we're doing pretty darn well. Here in Arlington, we're under 4% um, positivity rate. Next slide, please. Uh, the state of Virginia is having a rough time. Then I'll talk a little bit real quick. This is the last thing, just getting into revenue um, because that's gonna be what we'll be talking about in, uh, in October and then, uh, and then further out. This is a different, you know, I've been doing, this will be, I think my 25th or 26th budget. I'll have to figure out when we get to it. I've done a lot of budgets. This is going to be a year like no other and tougher than, than any other. And of course, we just have to get through this year. We're FY 20, 2021. Um, and we've got all kinds of uh, issues. Next slide, please. And we're going to have to kind of back, keep things balanced because we have to have a balanced budget. So in April, when we did our first um, much uh, slimmed down budget, um, these are some of the, sort of the assumptions we made about reductions in these different revenue sources. Um, and that we you know, made some minor adjustments and we sort of assumed then we'd start getting, you know, bouncing back in the summer, right? Um, and maybe taxes and fees getting to normal levels this fall where we are now, not. Next slide, please. Because instead of being a V-shaped dip, um, this particular, you know, for the economy, some thoughts was, next slide, please. Oh, yeah, wait a second. You're gonna go down and come straight up, but instead it's, yeah, it's just like that. 
it's not, it, we're, and we're just kind of staying along and we do not see us bouncing back anytime real quick. So um, that's a, a, a large uh, over 20% gap in sort of total spending. Um, and of course this year, if you look at that graph, you can see where we were in January, things were going great. It was gonna be a great year. So January, February, March, and then COVID hits, right? So, but we had almost a first quarter with pretty good, um, you know, pretty good uh, revenues. And the picture was kind of normal and things were kind of good. Next year, we're not gonna start out on that high point. So I feel this next year's budget is likely to be even tougher. Next slide, please. Um, and what are we gonna do? Uh, so we've got a revenue shortfall this year. We're gonna have one next year. Uh, we've got some things right now. We've actually already start, started slowing and eliminating spending. As many of you have seen, we've got beautiful Lubber Run Community Center. We're not opening it because their cost to having that building open and having staffing and things. So it's, we're kind of mothballing it a bit, um, keeping it obviously a healthy building. You have to be careful about that. Uh, but we're not, we're not you know, opening it, doing a grand opening or anything. We've got close out um, every time at the end of the year, there's, there's some money left over. This is a good thing. You never want your checking, your checking book to, to get down to absolute checking account to get the bottom. And of course, for the county, you don't want our budget to hit bottom. You always have to have some cushion, but then that is a nice carryover for the next year. We always get look at that in October and decide what to do with it. Usually a lot of it we put into um, our affordable housing investment fund because it's kind of one-time funding spending and then we carry over some. This year, we may be needing to use most or all of it to balance out um, the, the, the shortfalls that we've got for this year. Because again, we have to end on a balanced budget. We can't start the, we can't end the year um, in debt, in, in the whole. Um, unlike the federal government, which can do that, um, we've got some contingent uh, reserves we've got for COVID. One of the things that we've been doing is the manager has a reserve and when we've got needed COVID spending, it takes a while for the Fed, federal money to come in. So the manager spends it out on housing and food for people, need to keep people in their homes, need to make sure people can eat and other things. And then when the federal funding comes through, we backfill it and then we have a fund again to keep putting out. But there's obviously a limit to how much we can do that. And uh, the looks of it now is no HEROES Act funding or anything possibly until January or February. Um, and we do have some other reserves that we'll be looking at. Uh, October, those presentations, uh, the closeout recommendations will be presented. I haven't seen them yet, but expect to see them soon. November, uh, we will be adopting the closeout, what we're going to do with it, um, and giving guidance to the manager for next year. And I think that's my last slide. I hope that was fast enough, Joe. Libby, real quick. Uh, yeah. How, how far in the hole are we? Uh, we are down, let me just think here. I, th I think it's in the well, range of 10, 10 to 20%. <clears throat> Yikes. Um, whole, I got it last time. Yeah, more like 10% of our um, operating fund. I believe, um, and I'm sorry, I didn't fresh up on those those numbers before I got here. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we have, but we've got these contingents and things, and we also are selling bonds because it's a really good time to refinance. But a lot of these tools we're using this year, part of the point is next year, we won't have those tools. So we're trying to be really careful. So I expect to hear a lot of things. Why don't you go into your rainy day fund? Why don't you, you know, zero that out? We're not gonna wanna do that because we gotta get through next year too. But thank you for asking, Mark. I'm sorry I didn't have an exact response for you. Anything else? All right. All I will say is we're in a much better shape than most of the rest of the country. Um, so we all got a win in November, which we know that. Thank you. Thanks for what everybody's doing. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Libby, for that update um, and, and your leadership as well as the leadership of the rest of the county board and the school board in leading us through these difficult times. Um, and I agree, it is is so important that we continue to elect democratic leaders um, who can who can be fiscally responsible and also empathetic, um, as I think was demonstrated by that presentation. Well, folks, I am so impressed with the team. We actually did manage to keep this under a very reasonable amount of time. Um, you have left plenty of time for us to do our activity for the night, which we're going to try something a little bit different here. We're going to we're going to do breakout rooms. So we went through the slides rather quickly. Um, we have already posted them online. Thank you to Lisa Backer and our awesome tech team. So those slides are already available for you to check out the links. Um, but because we, we went through it quickly, uh, we wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to talk a little bit more if you had questions. And so that is the purpose of the breakout room. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have breakout rooms on our major volunteer 
areas uh, where we really need the help uh, in the lead up to the election. So that's poll grading and precinct operations in general. So that was Carol with the with the uh, with the vote pumpkins as well as Marsha talking about early voting poll grading. Second, we're going to uh, have a, a breakout room that's all about our lit drops and our socially distanced canvassing. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that, that's going to be breakout room number two. We're going to have a breakout room about outreach and our caucuses, which, which Big Mike uh, described all the wonderful activities that they've got going on there. Uh, our fourth breakout room is going to be about beyond Arlington, so how you can get involved to help candidates outside of Arlington. Um, and that will also emphasize phone banking because that is how we are supporting those candidates uh, at this point in the in the cycle. And then finally, we have a breakout room about voter protection um, that we didn't really touch upon that during the the call the the meeting today. But we do have a voter protection team that's gearing up to send out poll observers across the state and across the county. So if you are interested in being an inside or outside poll observer, um, we have a breakout room available for you to hear more information about that. In terms of how you do it, I may ask for some help here from Lisa and Maggie, our, our, our Zoom maestros. Um, but in fact, I am going to ask for some help. Uh, do one of you guys want to explain what needs to happen here? I don't know, Lisa? Hi there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up all the rooms and you will see most of you uh, will see an icon that looks like that thing on the upper right side there, that like series of four boxes. And that'll be what you click to join a breakout room. All the rooms will be listed there. You can choose what room to go to. That's how you move to another room if you wanted to go to different rooms and kind of hop around and talk to different people. Um, at the bottom where you usually would uh, leave um, the meeting in general, that you can also leave the room from that point if you just want to come back to the main session. And once I open them up, if you don't see that, um, I would suggest you use raise hand or you can also just chat because right now I'm listed as the host in the chat and I can assign you to the room you want to go to. So if you want to chat in um, because you can't find the icon, you might need to give me a second as I go through everyone, but uh, just tell me the room you want to go to and I'll move you into it. Okay. So I'm Jill, let me know when you want me to open them up. All right, well, we're going to open up the rooms. Um, I want, while we slam everybody, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the efforts that you have done over the past month. It has made a difference. I know for many of you, you have received many, many crazy emails from me, um, either through the blast email function that we have or for my own personal account. I am grateful for the work that every single one of you has done. I am asking you to pull out all of the stops in this all of the above election year. Leave nothing on the on the field we've got we've got to leave it all on the field leave it all on the field nothing on the table whatever the whatever the um i guess uh imagery that you need to motivate you is what i'm trying to evoke here um but really nothing could be that's more important and the stakes really could not be any higher please sign up to volunteer dig deep add that extra volunteer um shift show up to poll greet on november 3rd and we will get there we will be victorious because I, I just know that we have the best candidates with the best ideas and the absolute best volunteers. Thank you, everybody. Let us go fight win onward to November 3rd. Open up the breakout rooms. All right, they are open.